Okay, let's launch right into it. In case you're not familiar who Dr. Workman is, Dr. Michael Workman's uh, A, uh, a dear friend of the show and a wonderful man, but B, he's one of the best plastic surgeons in the Pacific Northwest. A little hair, hold on, it's bothering me. Um, and he's done more breast augmentations than anybody else. He's got years and years of practice. He's got his skills honed down. Oh, yeah. So if you need any sort of body work, augmentation, lift, tuck, tighten, done, he's from the man. neck on down, he's the guy to go to. Now, let's talk a little bit about um, breast lifts as opposed to breast implants. When, um, wh what would be the, the, the reason for getting one instead of the other? Like, say your, your breasts are uh, perhaps not as full as they used to be. Um, but maybe that could change, but, but when you hold them, when you cup them under your hand fine. and lift them a little bit, they seem fine. So in, in a case like that, which would you use and why? That would be a very good question. There's basically two types of breasts. Those breasts that need to be just filled out and they're not very droopy, and those that have more than a half inch of the breast hanging below the fold. So, so behind where the bra line, under where the bra yep. line would be if you took that bra yep. off where they would hang to. Yep, in fact what I always do is we draw a horizontal line, you know, parallel with the, you know, the, what we call it the inframammary fold of the breast and then you know, just look straight ahead and if you have much more than an inch of tissue that hangs below that fold, we need to probably start thinking about doing some sort of a lift. Okay, then what happens when you do a lift? What's the procedure? Well, typically what we do is, I mean, if you think about it, we've got too much skin from the uh, basically the neck down to the nipple and so we remove a like a moon-shaped or a crescent-shaped piece of uh, skin above the nipple and shift it up and then we actually excise some of the tissue below the, we remove some of that hanging tissue so that it is no longer hanging and basically what that'll do for most women it you know gets that nipple up out of the southern hemisphere and it gets so we have no breast tissue hanging below so the nipple's not looking at the ground it's more looking right looking right in the eye exactly but then we use the implant to fill it up because we oftentimes at that point you have what I call kind of a ski jump type breast. In other words, we really haven't filled out the volume up top. And women like perkiness. Young breasts are perky. They have a lot of so men do push. too. I I've, I've yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've heard. <laughs> no, absolutely. And so that's what the implant or the augmentation fills out the breast. And the lift portion, we only do if you have tissue hanging down below that fold. So where are the scars present on a breast that's been lifted? Well, it can vary. Um, oftentimes, they're around the nipple. And sometimes, they'll be from the nipple going down to that fold. Like we, a seam. Yeah, like a lollipop. We call that a lollipop. Um, the line what? going up to the nipple. Yeah, so you know, go from 6 o'clock on your areola, you know, which is a, you know, the bottom portion of the nipple. Mine's digital. Take, Oh, is it? Oh, yeah, it is. Uh, and take a, you know, draw a line straight. I'm sorry, that was pretty good. Hey, that was not, yes, that was not bad at all. But just draw a line straight down from your nipple right down to that fold, and that's the area where we remove that section or that wedge of tissue. And um, how, uh, breasts, breasts start to, to droop at all different ages according to genetics and athletic activity and stuff like that don't they and size and size, size is just huge i mean there's no pun intended <laughs> well, thank uh, you. yeah but you know like there's kind of a saying look at the you know the girls or the young women in high school that were double d by the time they're in their 30s <laughs> virtually all of them have fallen down the the female breast for most people is not designed to hold a lot of weight up high so it's an age and a weight deal hmm. Or design flaws. Sorry, yes, I, don't, yes, I don't see yes. why you couldn't just take like a pinch of skin above the breast and pull it up pull and up and up and up until it went over the shoulder yeah. and then just kind of stitch it right there over the shoulder. Makes sense. We actually can do that if we take the ponytail and just keep <laughs> wrapping it around and around. No, wait a minute. No, that's for a facelift. You just tighten the ponytail yeah, as but tight as you can possibly There's get. a two for one if you keep twisting on it. It'll pull those breasts Eventually. up a little bit. <laughs> now, when you're doing a tummy tuck and a breast lift or implant at the same time, my my wondering is always how come one thing doesn't pull the other thing down? Like oh, how yeah. come and when you're getting a tummy tuck, how come that doesn't pull the breast level down lower? That's a very good question. And that's because at that fold we talked about, that fold is created by really tough tissue that anchors that fold to the you know, under, underlying tissue, such that we can then pull that tummy skin down, but it won't that area that's you know kind of uh, we call it connective tissue, doesn't move at all. Here's kind of a strange question that I don't think we've ever asked, and that is if you're doing a, uh, a mommy makeover, which is a tummy tuck, maybe some liposuction, and a breast lift, 
What, what do you do first? Usually, it doesn't we, matter. Does it go breast, tummy, or tummy, breast? We tend to go with the breast first, especially if we're putting an implant for sterility reasons. So that you always want to go from clean to you know dirtier to areas. Filthy, filthy, to filthy, 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 dirty, yes. grimy area. Yes. And is it true that you put a um, a person that you're performing a breast implant or breast augmentation on on sort of a moving gurney so you can see how the breasts fall? Absolutely. Oh my gosh. Absolutely. That's so weird. Never even yeah. thought about that. Well, breasts Makes look sense. breasts look totally different you know on your back than they do lying up, yeah. and we want to get them as close as we can when someone's straight up and down. So we literally will bring the back of the table up almost 90 degrees and then you know I'll actually I go around and I actually look down you know from the same portion you know from the same position that a woman would look at if you need somebody if that's too much yeah. and you need someone to I'm do in. that for you Ted can take yep. that okay role. okay I'm excellent do you ever make them okay. jog so they can see what's gonna look great when they're running on the beach or anything? you mean when they're unconscious yeah, it's up and down. <laughs> weekend at Bernie's yeah, yeah weekend at Bernie's well I haven't we haven't done that do yet. it if you have questions about a procedure for Dr. Michael Workman, he's here right now to answer those questions. Maybe this is the year that you're thinking, yep, you know what, I'm, I'm tired of my body looking this way. I want it to look the way that I've dreamed it could or the way it looked um, a couple years ago yeah. or uh, the way that I always imagined. But there's just these spots thanks to, um, you know, genetics. I'll always have my Aunt Shirley's butt no matter what else I do. Oh, Triple eight seven three three five one zero five. I don't have an Aunt Shirley, but I imagine if I did, she'd have her butt. She'd have a butt. Yeah, I'll tell you what. Triple eight seven three three five one zero five. Your questions for Dr. Michael Workman. The doc's response right after this. Amy Nicole, what's your question for Dr. Workman? Well, I was just wondering if you're going in for a C-section, is it possible that you can do a tummy tuck afterwards, like at the same time? That's a really yeah, common why not? question. Yeah, a very good question. Sometimes I think that you know, depending upon you know how long the procedure takes and you know blood loss and all that, um, you know, a lot of plastic surgeons would prefer to actually wait a little bit. The advantage with waiting is the remaining skin is will have contracted a lot more, and you probably can get more you know tissue out, and you can probably get a little better job done. Because you okay. shrink up a little bit, don't you? I mean, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I figure you're in there anyway, so. Yeah, I mean, you know, you know, sometimes it's done that way, but I think it's pro you probably get a better result if you do it on a delay basis. Okay, and is the recovery time about the same as, like, recovering from a C-section? Yeah, most women say it's not as bad as a C-section. I think that um, you know, we're not going all the way through the muscles. We're not going quite as deep, and it's cutting the muscles that are really uh, painful. Okay. Yeah, I, I've had two C-sections, and I have a lot of scar tissue built up, and, I mean, I've lost all my baby weight, and I'm ready to go in there and have that done, and I've got to clean that area up. And it'll take out a lot of that C-section scarring, won't it? Oh, yeah. Normally, we try to go below your uh, C-section scar, right at the level of your, you know, your pubic hair, and so we can usually get rid of an awful lot of that scar tissue for you. Okay. Good to know. Thank you. You're welcome. Our guest is cosmetic surgeon, Dr. Michael Workman. Hi, Vanessa. What's your question? Well, I was wondering, um, when you were talking about breasts and, and nipples um, facing downward versus <coughs> forward, sure. Um, what, what happens um, in surgery if you're lifting the breast but the nipple still face forward? How do you, uh, do you approach that differently? You said the, I'm sorry. You said the nipple faces forward or down. It still looks out. No, it does not look down. It still looks out as if the rest is where it's supposed to be. Only they've moved down quite a bit over the years. Is that correct? Well, we can. I mean, we oh, can. Oh, so act, you're I'm saying sorry. the breast is where it should be? Just the nipples have changed? No, the opposite. The nipples are where they should be, but okay. the breast is moved. Much further down. If you're looking oh, at like a yep. teardrop oh, shape, I see. Teardrop so they haven't extended. moved their whole head; they've just lowered their chin. <laughs> That's correct. Yeah, exactly. We call that that we actually have a, a term for that. It's called bottoming out. In other words, the <laughs> bottom. <laughs> <Very nice. laughs> well, no, no, no. It just means that the you know the bottom or the lower portion of the breast has drooped a little bit, and the nipple can stay in the in the proper location. So in that case, we need to do a lift where we primarily remove tissue below the. Um, nipple, i.e., where that extra uh, um, tissue is from bottoming out. Okay. Okay, so, okay, great, thank you. Thanks, You're welcome. Hi, Lacey, what's your question for Dr. Workman? Hi, so I have a question. I had a breast augmentation about two years ago and um, was really happy at first with the results, and, but now I'm kind of noticing that 
crippling has already taken into effect, and it's only been two years. And I'm curious if that was common. And what ca- sure. what is that rippling, and what causes it? Rippling basically uh, is seeing the outer shell of the implant, which can, you know, when you hold it up, can actually have some ripples. Could she have it. lost weight? She could have lost weight. She could have lost glandular breast tissue, or the weight of the implants could have stretched out and thinned your tissue. So it's almost always due to less tissue on top of, you know, or covering the ripples that are always in the implant. Th- things we do to correct that are switching over to a silicone gel implant. Oftentimes that'll help, or sometimes just gaining a little bit of weight. There's a new implant that you brought in that has almost no rippling at all. Yes, and, and some of the newer high-profile implants tend to have less rippling, doctor. <laughs> doctor Look, I doctor. just have a good memory, that's all. So she should go back to her surgeon, perhaps? And... I would check back with your surgeon, yeah, and if, has your, if, if your weight's gone down, you know, I'd chow down. <laughs> well, my weight hasn't gone down okay. too much. I mean, uh, not at all, hardly. I just, you know, I had it done under the muscle, and just for whatever reason, like in... If I tense up or I'm doing sports, it's like I can see the ripple right there. It's kind of, I don't know, just, I, I'm self-conscious about sure. it. Sure. Sure. Well, sometimes when we do put them under the muscle, when you contract your muscle, it can look a little bit funny. Um, and yet, right, exactly. That's yeah, funny. we call that kind of window shading. And yeah, we're, we're a name for everything, don't you? Well, we try to. We try to. And but the problem with you know window shading is we're much better off to have that implant under the muscle in most cases. You know, for mammograms and for you know just for a variety of reasons. And you know, I'll tell people ahead of time. You know, this is something where you, we have to worry about. But you're still much better off to have it under the muscle. Good luck, Lacey. Yeah, okay. And we're all out of time for this go-around with Dr. Workman. If you'd like to check out his website, which includes some great before and after pictures, as well as information on financing, you can ask questions there as well, different procedures that are performed mm-hmm. at his two locations. You can go to drmichaelworkman.com. That's, of course, linkable from our website as well. And we'll see you back here in two weeks, Doc. Thank you. All right, thanks. thanks.